Welcome back to the XRP podcast. I am your host, Andrew, the XRP Maxi. And I apologize if I sound a little messed up today. I'm just recovering from a bit of illness currently. But this is probably one of the most monumental days in the history of cryptocurrency ever. All right. And it's happening right in the beginning of 2024. That's what tells you right away. This is going to be an amazing year. This is going to be a crazy year. This is the year of the dragon, a.k.a. the year of the moon boys, a.k.a. the year of the XRP Maxi and the XRP Army. As we all know, officially, officially, the Bitcoin ETF has been approved by the SEC. Technically, it was let out of the bag yesterday that it was approved by the SEC, but then they reneged. What happened was they let out a tweet saying that the Bitcoin ETF was approved prematurely. Shortly after doing that, they quickly reneged and claimed that their account had been hacked due to a security compromise by not having two-factor authentication enabled. While everybody on Twitter is calling them out for their bullshit, I'm inclined to agree with them as well. This is total bullshit. But the real meaning of what the SEC did on Twitter is to display a fact that now it's not just the major market holders in Bitcoin currently like China who are going to manipulate it, but it's also now going to be the United States government. So Bitcoin's movement is going to be getting manipulated a whole lot more from now on. The SEC, by pulling a little trick like that, is them just saying that they can essentially make or break the market at any time if they choose to. And I believe they will take advantage of that power. Whatever the future may hold, this is extremely bullish for Bitcoin and for cryptocurrencies. Because now, as a result of the Bitcoin ETF being approved, rather than seeing large spikes in the movement of Bitcoin, we're actually seeing large spikes in the movement of Ethereum. Why? Because the Bitcoin ETF was already to a degree priced in, especially yesterday, considering that the SEC's actions of prematurely announcing it only ended up blowing the top out of Bitcoin to about 47k and then ripping it right back down to about, I think, 42k. Whatever the situation may be, people are now speculating further into the future since they see that the approval of a Bitcoin ETF also means that it's going to be subsequently followed by other cryptocurrencies as well. And where do people look immediately after Bitcoin? They look straight to Ethereum. In another one of my episodes, I already explained the cryptocurrency market cycle to you. Money in the cryptocurrency market typically flows from Bitcoin over into Ethereum, over into large cap altcoins, and then over into micro cap altcoins. And this is all happening because money's being purposely kept out of xrp but if you want to dive into the xrp part of that i'll have that video in the description as well as linked on the top but the main point i'm trying to say is since the market had already priced in a bitcoin etf money is actually flowing to the next thing now the next main topic the next buzz the next big thing in the minds of the crypto space because crypto we don't like thinking in the present we like thinking in the future we like thinking what could be and speculating on that and right now that big thing is ethereum now naturally after ethereum where do you think the money would flow to well the money would flow to the only other cryptocurrency that has legally in the u.s been declared to not be a security and that's xrp this bitcoin etf is amazing for Ethereum, but it's even more amazing for XRP. But this isn't me telling you to ape into Ethereum or XRP, maybe Ethereum, but with XRP, you know it's being manipulated. All right. So I would actually expect it to dump further because this coin just knows how to dump. And when it dumps, that's when I would say you should start aping in if you are interested in XRP. If you aren't, hey, don't say I didn't warn you. But besides that, I want to jump into other things in the actual crypto ecosystem. Another project that I've talked about on this podcast before, it was even my last episode. It was Kenshi and the Unchained Network. So Kenshi has recently hit a huge major milestone as well. They've raised their market cap all the way to 25 million. 
And this is such a significant thing, not just because of the grand valuation and the good job that Puya and the Kenshi team have done so far and will continue to do, but it also means that since they've hit a market cap of 25 million, that means they're finally going to start looking at offers to be listed on a centralized exchange. This is significant because when I had when I had spoke about Kenshi, when I was detailing the Kenshi network and the Unchained network and their roadmap in my original Kenshi video, which I will also share in the description, I was talking about how they actually purposely delayed centralized exchange listings because of this. It's not every day you see a project that actually delays listings as opposed to trying to rush them in order to jeep the market cap up as high as possible. And I really like what Puya and his team are doing because they're trying to do this the right way. They know that they're doing, again, something that has never occurred before in the space of cryptocurrency. Because that's what we like talking about on this podcast is innovators and shakers and movers in the industry who are actually daring to build something real and daring to build something new. Puya recently released an article about this situation and about why the Unchained Network is such a significant thing. You see, the Unchained Network is different from Ethereum and other blockchains because it doesn't really have a chain of blocks because the network doesn't function in a chronological graph. It doesn't even have blocks for that matter. In his article, Puya details how Unchained is made to be scalable. Its primary use case is to validate data and run complex analysis tasks and computations. So this is the type of stuff that you need in order to use AI and deep learning mechanisms, train AI models, do those crazy deep fakes, and all types of things. Unchained doesn't have blocks. It doesn't keep a global state either. And because of this, this affects how nodes reach consensus. Since nodes don't have to reach consensus in a competitive manner, but instead they reach consensus in a cooperative manner by each node being delegated to perform different types of tasks while also receiving and sending data from other nodes to it so they all remain in the same state. I know it may sound a little complex, but you should really watch any of my videos on Kenshi and I'll actually give you a beautiful deep dive on it. But basically, this technology is worth so much, it's better to be careful for them and be safe. You don't want to rush the project and scare investors and scare cooperators and scare potential clients away. They're gearing up not just for a business, but more so to set up a business that will support other industries and businesses around it. This is just like Chainlink in the fact that it's actually beneficial for them to keep the price within a certain range and to avoid speculation. This is just like XRP in the same fact as well. And you'll typically see that with these projects that are building real world value. That speculation in the market can actually be very detrimental to them. But currently, Kenshi is in such a, such a new state that price appreciation comes easily. And I don't want to get into that part of this because that's not what this video is about. This video is more so about how the value behind Kenshi and what they're building should not be faded at all cost. I know that blockchain and cryptocurrency right now today has a very bad rap in the normal world, in the modern world, in common society. But fuck, I even saw on Netflix the other day another movie about Bitcoin because, you know, since the Bitcoin ETF's coming out, they gotta begin the psyops now. But basically, it was a movie about painting all people who use Bitcoin and cryptocurrency as inherent criminals, scammers, terrorists, drug dealers, whatever the case. The movie's called Bitconned, by the way, if you want to go watch it. Was it good? I don't know. I didn't finish that trash. But I think that with the approval of the ETF, though it may take time, yes, for you know the common class who aren't as obsessed with cryptocurrency to catch up, I think we will see it in a much more grander and appealing light. I think that's why they're actually dropping these movies that are fudding Bitcoin right now. And the SEC is doing their very best to FUD Bitcoin right now and says, don't invest, stay away, stay away, stay away, is because 
they realize with the current state of the market, this is such a great opportunity. This is such a grand endeavor that so many individuals are taking it upon themselves to build today that it can be life-changing for so many people, but not a lot of people are ready or can handle this type of life change. And so they're going to fud it away. And unfortunately, it's going to keep away both a lot of people who can't handle it and a lot of people who can and would love and benefit from this type of knowledge, from being in this type of industry and from immersing themselves in this new way of life and conducting business and existing and collaborating in a society. Moving on from Kenshi, I'm going to have a update coming out very soon on Proof Platform. Because I talk about Proof Platform so much in all my videos, but I realize I never actually made an update on him. And it's for good reason, because I've been watching in silence and I see that JP's doing a lot. But also, I know that with Proof Platform, a lot of their marketing and actually endeavoring to build more visibility to the project won't begin until February. And that's just because, again, it's another project in its infancy. They're trying to get everything established right away. But I love Proof Platform so much, especially as someone who loves shitcoins and loves the shitcoin market, just like Crypto Twitter, we're obsessed with shitcoins. If you love shitcoins, you have to be on Proof. You just have to. And I know it's just an Ethereum platform right now, but if they could make it multi-chain, it would be insane. Fuck. Everybody's degening around in Solana, in Say, in Injective right now. And there's a lot of people degening in Ethereum too. But imagine if you could degen in any of these chains with Proof Platform. Currently, you can only do it in Ethereum. But they would guarantee that you never get hard rugged again. Nobody's going to just do you dirty and pull the liquidity from you. All right. That means when we're jumping into these crazy shit coins and the market's going wild, there is so much more room to grow. There is so much more safety at hand. And it's so much more approachable for the common man to do and start. Proof platform and unruggable platforms for launching tokens will literally change the game. Change the game in terms of playing, trading, entering, speculating, and building a business around the crypto market. It's amazing. It's fucking amazing. And I'm so excited. And I can't wait to share that with you. But I really do gotta go. I really am sick. And I have so many videos planned. I don't want to just run my mouth on this one. I love you guys so much. I will talk to you guys soon. God bless you. Be well. Be safe. Take care.